And one more breath deep in the nose, all the way to your belly. Hold it for a second. And now to the mouth. And just be in this moment for a little while and see how you feel. Take a moment to wiggle your toes for a little bit. And then wiggle your feet a little bit. Create awareness in your feet and in your legs. But take all the time you need. There's no pressure. And whenever you feel ready to come back, you may turn your camera on again and um, Give yourself a little moment to enjoy the feelings of being grounded through your breaths. And once you're back, before you do anything else, please take your paper and your pen and write down how you feel right now. Doesn't actually matter whatever you feel, anything that pops to mind is great because we're going to use it in a little while to compare how we feel when we're not grounded.
How is everybody doing? Good. Yeah, good. Yeah, you guys landed in this moment. Yeah, I feel calm. Okay, cool. Anybody else want to share how they feel or how they've experienced it? Um, I'm not distracted by anything. I feel very centered. Cool. Okay. For me, it's like just I stop thinking about words and thoughts. Um, I just like, yeah, no words in my brain, just feeling like in my body. Yeah. Good. If you're guys ready, you can also turn on your camera back again, because we'll be speaking about this experience and what grounding means exactly. And before we're going to continue, it's something that I've realized that's very important when being busy with energetic work. And if we're going to take a little deeper dive in a few minutes from now or in a, like later this evening, it's good that we are protected. So now we're grounded and we're able to put up a barrier. So what we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna create um, walls of light. I always use my imagination to visualize walls of light around my room or around my house. And you can also do it with intention. You don't actually need to see it. You can also say that you put up these light walls of light. If you want to go a little step further, you can also say, um, you can also invite your spirit guides for tonight because they are able to communicate with us within these walls of light. It's a, it's a safe environment to go on a journey within your chakras. It's safe to go in these meditations and it's also safe for them to contact you within these walls of light. So, um, just take your little moment, put these walls of light up. And if you feel the need to contact your spirit guides, just make sure um, you announce to them that you're grateful for them being there. And I'm sure they will reach out tonight. Great, Amanda, are you experiencing pain in your neck or anything? No, it just helps me loose, get more loose when I roll around my neck. Um, so no, not at the moment. It just helps me kind of release everything because I think I store a lot of my um, uh, stress in my neck and in my stomach, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also connected. Is it like your lower stomach? oh yeah definitely yeah yeah those both areas are connected and they are big energetic containers for stress but also memories yeah okay cool if um if everybody's uh, got it done i don't know did everybody put down how are they how they are feeling right now on their piece of paper 
you don't have to share what's on it, but if it's done, it's done. That's good. Okay. So I'm going to start there with uh, grounding in general, what it means to me. And then I would like to ask you guys what it means to you and how you feel about it and how you experience it. What grounding means for me is like um, tuning into this radio station, but it's called the rhythm of the earth. It's very cleansing and soothing, calming. And it's always helped re to replenish myself and my energetic containers because they always empty once in a while when we use them up. And always when I start grounding, I feel replenished almost straight away. I feel very calm. But for me, it's also a form of self-care and self-love and this practice to just give myself um, yeah, these moments where I really take care of my energetic body, but in that way also for my physical body. But it's also a way of claiming my power, focusing my energy, and it's a form of protection. How do you guys experience grounding in general if you're working on it? Oh, my idea of grounding was a bit different, <laughs> honestly. Okay. It was more How like being, well, I saw it as being productive and stuff. So mm -hmm. it's more like achievement uh, sort of focused. Yes. But this is, well, more if like, you're... this is more like grounding to the earth and like spirit in a sense, mm -hmm. like seeding yourself into it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like when you um, connect, when you're grounded, your energy is like connected to the earth. So you have like this unlimited amount of energy to do anything you want. So you can also um, use it probably even without actually knowing um, to, to keep energized for your work and to stand on the earth with two feet. So you can use it like for anything you particularly want, as long as you know how to use all the Earth's energy. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing, Montas. Thank you. Anybody else wants to share anything? I feel like uh, a lot of times when I'm trying to ground, I like to be barefoot on the ground and kind of imagine what's below me and connect to the earth and what's at the center of the earth and just that whole process of how small we are compared to what's beneath us and even sometimes to imagine who's on the other side of the earth you know from me and in what's over there you know it just really kind of puts you in per perspective and also helps you really ground too yes the whole universe that way you know yes that's also a very beautiful way of doing it Thank you. You're welcome. I was going to say, I don't really practice it. So this is like a good starting point. It is. Okay. Well, I didn't really hear it uh, now, but um, I've realized when I talk about grounding and doing these exercises that there's a lot of miscommunication about it. You have like earthing practices, which help you to maintain a healthy root chakra, but you also have grounding techniques. And um, when you do earthing techniques, you will go outside in the woods, to the beach, you will be in nature, indulge yourself in the sea, walk barefoot on the sand. You will smell the flowers. You will actually be outside and um, indulge yourself in nature. And that's like more earthing. And when you're actually grounding, you will use techniques to make sure your energy stays, um, stays circulating and you use the earth's energy to your for your own good but also for good around for the people around you actually because everything you do also affects the people around you 
it's funny that you uh, said uh, energy circulating your energy because like uh, when you told to write down what I felt I wrote uh, light well I felt light it's like sort of like particles of energy like continuous moving at a continuous like it's gust but it's like gentle gust of wind and it never stops it's just like I don't know <laughs> Yeah, well, I think you already got like a big part of um, how does it feel to be grounded already there. It's when you start grounding, you actually activate your own energy and your energy can start to circulate. And also because you tune in to the rhythm of the earth, your energy will also start circulating on the rhythm of the earth and you will feel the energy moving and you will feel uh, sensations in your feet, in your legs, in your lower belly, in your lower back. You can also feel like heat coming up, like you're in some kind of sauna that's getting activated from down to bottom or from down to the top. It's all different kind of experiences. And I think it's good to have like um, a healthy balance between earthing and grounding. It's very good to get outside in nature and to make sure you cleanse your root chakra and cleanse your energetic body in general. But to maintain a healthy root chakra, you will also need the grounding techniques to make sure you have this healthy level and healthy balanced root chakra, like only being outside or only doing the grounding techniques is just one part of maintaining this balance within your root chakra. And um, is there anybody who wants to share how they feel after they've gone for a long walk or for like a long swim? After a long walk um, or just like a, a bike ride, I just feel refreshed, especially because mm -hmm. it gets me out breathing and not stuck inside all day. So um, it does feel a little bit refreshing just being out and outside. So, yeah. Yeah, for me, I think like if I and inside of, like my apartment or just anywhere too long, I feel like there's like stuck energy. And I literally, this like the second I get outside, I, I feel it's like dispersed. Like I feel it's like it leaves, I don't know. And I can just like come back to my apartment and even like being gone for like an hour, it feels like it's a completely new place. And if I would have just stayed there, but within yeah. me, it's also like breathing, like, a, like just naturally the breathing gets deeper and slower. Um, and yeah, just from like a cognitive perspective, like the quality of thoughts are and like maybe I think less, but be less, but few, fewer, but better or higher vi vi vibratory thoughts, I guess I'd say. Mm -hmm. It helps you to actually calm down all the excess thoughts and only what actually matters. Maybe what comes from within the soul will come up because you're maybe more connected when you're outside. Yeah. And um, when you have stuck energy in your house, Jesse, do you then mean like in yourself or in your house in general? Uh, more more of myself. Like I just yeah. feel like I just need to like have air hit me, hit my like energy and then, yeah. Yeah, I understand that. This is also stuff you could write down for yourself. We're going to create this little piece of paper, which will help us get insights. Okay, if I do this, how do I feel? If I do this, how do I feel? And if you come into certain situations that you feel stressed or anxious or depressed, that you can actually have these tools for yourself. Okay, if I go outside, I will feel more energized, more refreshed. And my energy will stay more moving. So you can actually use these things for your own benefits.
And I hope everyone has a chair nearby, a chair or something they can sit on, which they can be a bit dangerous on, but please watch yourself. We're going to do this technique to pull ourselves out of the grounding that we're now in. And once we're going to do this, I want you to be very aware of everything that happens within you, how you feel, how your thoughts are, like anything that changes, just remember it. And once we get out of doing this little technique to to make uh, to show what is what it is how we feel when we're not grounded, then we can become more aware of when we are not grounded and what we can do to uh, make sure we get in this healthy state of grounding again. Like if I look for myself. Um, when I'm not grounded, I um, I always get like my thoughts rushing, but also in some kind of very negative way. So I can become like a bit anxious or pessimistic. And now I know when I'm at my work or I'm doing groceries or anything, and I feel this energy rising up to my head and getting these thoughts rushing all over the place, then I know, okay, this is not how I want to feel. This is because I'm not grounded. And then I can within a few seconds, get myself back in this calm and relaxed state, wherever I am. But in order to get there, we first have to figure out how we feel when we're not grounded. So I would like to ask everyone to grab a chair. And it has to be like a chair wherein you could, yeah, I don't know how you say this in English, but like when you lean on the back to sticks of the chair, that you can actually be a little bit dangerous. So you actually pull yourself off the earth's energy and then just watch what's happening. Take a little moment for yourself and see what you're experiencing when you pull yourself out. And I'll be waiting here for whenever you guys are ready.
whenever you guys are ready, you can put on your camera. Then we can discuss um, our breakthroughs through this exercise. Welcome back. Can I ask that I forget to mute my mic by any chance? Um, no, I didn't hear anything. Oh, that's great. Then. <laughs> Otherwise, you've been very quiet. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Does anybody want to share what they have experienced just now? I feel like it's more of like a floating sensation especially when like you sit back in the chair and it's kind of like a new me coming out of me if that makes sense yes okay Did you guys feel the difference between the grounding and after this exercise? Yes. So as long as you've learned something from it, that's good. For me, it's kind of weird because I always feel uh, kind of connected to everything. Mm -hmm. So, and recently I've been having these like huge huge intense moments of this just connection in a sense of everything okay. it's like mostly it's about human spirit like what it is what it does but mm -hmm. it's on a whole, whole other level mm -hmm. <laughs> than what i had it's like way beyond what i can perceive but anyway as for feeling wise i don't really know it was after the grounding and when you told to do it with a chair that maybe it was subtle too subtle or maybe it's just normal pace for me or something like that mm -hmm. i'm not sure thank you for sharing this i think um with the things you're experiencing now, Mantas, that grounding will be um, something that is um, you can actively use when you feel like you're experiencing a lot of this stuff. You mean stress and anxiety, for example? Is an example, but also what you just said, like you mentioned something like that it's more than you can um more than you can perceive didn't you uh -huh. say something like that yeah so when it feels like it becomes too much grounding is like a great way to let go of excess energy as well as it helps you to replenish it also helps you to let go of all excess energy mm -hmm. i mean i have a lot of root work I need to do. And I know this um, mm -hmm. because of some health issues. I, I work with this book on psychology of health issues and it actually connected with chakras. And one of the main ones that came up was the root chakra that I needed to work on. Um, okay. But when, you know, when the chair was back, I felt shaky, my heart rate increased. I mm -hmm. felt hard to focus. I felt fearful. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that's telling me, yeah, that's where the work is because, you know, that relates a lot to a lot of the, 
the things that have gone on during these health issues too. Um, and of course, yeah. when the chair was on the floor, I felt relaxed, focused, secure, you know, all the things mm -hmm. you should feel when your root chakra is stable, yes. you know, does that make sense? Yes, it does. It uh, really does. And um, this is like great that this happens right now, because now you can become aware of when yeah. you feel your heart racing, when you feel these symptoms that you actually just called. And then you can, um, we're speaking about different techniques today. And what we're going to do in a second is um, we're going to apply this technique wherein you can get yourself grounded anywhere, anytime within seconds. So yeah. anytime you feel this way, you can, you can just be aware of the fact, okay, I'm feeling this way again. Now I can do this technique and then you will feel immediately better. So that's Absolutely. the whole yeah. point. I could totally see how that will help. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, Mandy. So my takeaway from this is that grounding is in a sense like recentering yourself, but in a different mm -hmm. sense of way, whereas recentering yourself is like mostly mind-based for me at least. And grounding is more like your whole body it's like the being in a sense mm -hmm. indeed yeah it's actually um grounding your whole being like your energy your body your mind your emotions it's like connecting it all in one because everything is connected and when you okay. start grounding you connect everything again and let go of everything which you need to let go on or fill up on anything you need to fill up on, whatever it may be for you. Thank you. You're welcome. And this is uh, just um, some nice information. Um, once you start to get into grounding practice more, you um, can start to experience different feelings in your feet. Mostly for most people, your left feet is the the foot you uh, receive energy in so you can actually feel in the middle of your foot energy coming in and in your right foot you'll be able to feel energy coming out maybe you experience it already but um, it's also possible that it will come later everybody has its own process the reason i'm telling you this is also because you can actively start using it by if you want to replenish focusing on your left feet if you want to let go focusing on your right feet and help uh, use this to help yourself throughout the day what i actually wanted to dive into now is what we did at the beginning of this meeting we took a few minutes for it and now are we going to use a few seconds to come in the same state as we just did within minutes so what we can all do is sit straight up. Put your both feet on the ground and be very aware of how you put your feet down. Then use one of your hands or both of your hands and put them on your belly, on the lower, lower spots of your belly. You can close your eyes if you want to, but you don't need to because you can do that anywhere. And then take in deep breaths through your nose into your belly and then breathe out longer than you breathe in. And then just do this until you feel grounded. It might take one breath, two breaths, three breaths, whatever that feels good. Seems like everybody's grounded within this few seconds. So this is something you can do anywhere, anytime, without people noticing in the middle of a fight, 
in the middle of a stressful situation, anxious situations, or even dangerous situations, as long as you uh, know when to flight and when to stay. <laughs> but um, this is something you can do anywhere, anytime. How was it to feel this within seconds that you can just get this done anywhere? At the beginning of the the first uh, part, when 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 we were starting the music, um, I felt this huge like surge of energy just going up up my body, and it was very interesting because like I I have this breathing technique while I'm jogging, so like it's like I breathe in three time uh, two times and I breathe out six. Well, three. <laughs> I breathe in two two times, and I can breathe out six times. Breathe out. <laughs> sorry, breathe in two times and breathe out three times. So, mm -hmm. so that's like it's like sort of like that effect, but it's like yeah. a different way. It's just pumps pumps the blood through my body a lot. I can feel actually it, my heart pumping and then as I breathe I, I I feel my heart in my like not my in my throat but like the I can feel the heart beating as I breathe through my lungs you are very aware in the moment then you actually feel your body that's also being grounded that you feel the parts of your body being at work or anything mm -hmm. it's cool how uh how you already did this unconsciously for yourself during your workouts. I think that's very cool. Thank you. Well, I found it out by an accident because I used to jog out. It just was like very simple breathing. You just sort of like automatic. I wasn't even thinking, but then just it was a few years ago, I think 2014 maybe that I found it. Okay. Yeah. Neat one. Well, when we stop thinking, magic happens, right? <laughs> yeah, in a sense. Well, the breathing requires thinking, like a little bit of it to count the time and breaths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. There's also another technique we can always use in public situations. It looks a little bit weirder, but if the breathing doesn't work, you can always try this or maybe when it's already overrun a bit and you have to separate yourself from a situation to get calm again. This is also something which you can really use. I will stand up for a bit because it's easier to show them. If you, yeah, I'm wearing black pants, so it's hard to see. Here is my belly button. So if you have like your dominant hand, for everybody it's different. For with me, it's my right hand and my left hand is the non-dominant hand. I will put my right hand just below my belly button, but then pointing downwards. And then my non-dominant hand, I will put on the bottom of my back, just above my bum. And it's a little bit lower than the front hands. So if I stand like this and I will breathe in from my dominant hands to the back of the hands, it's like one breath and you're grounded. But you have to take a little, uh, take a little experience with it before you actually can get the air circulating within your chakras there. But if you breathe in through your nose, through your first hands, and then feel it circulating through the back of your hands and breathe out. And then breathe in between your hands, breathe in and out. I'm standing strong as a tree now. If anybody push me, I will not fall.
Sorry, can I just ask the non-dominant hand, the, the one that you put uh, behind your back, mm -hmm. do you have to put the palm facing the back or the uh, <laughs> behind the ball? It's like... I got it. It's like this. So All right. your palm... All right. Okay, thank you. Because we are chakras and you will use the chakras of your hands to activate the chakras here through breathing. And is it Thank like, you. cause this is like one of my first times doing this, but I definitely felt more grounded in my feet. And is that where you would feel it the most? Okay. It's like when you get sucked into the earth, it's like you're like, you're an astronaut that your feet are stuck on the earth. If you have to like a very heavy feet when you walk, then you are actually very grounded. No, and I'm going to take mantis of your trick of next time I go for a walk to see how grounded I could be mm -hmm. as, and, and to your point, like with the left and the right foot, just to see mm -hmm. the energy flowing. So yeah. I'm gonna try that. Yeah, it's nice to try that to create some more awareness in how you feel when you are grounded because not everybody is the same. Some people feel it more in their belly and in their back and in their legs as in their feet. I really feel it in my feet. In the beginning, my feet even hurt. So if you start experience pain in the beginning, don't freak out right away because in the beginning it can hurt. But once you start practicing it more and more, you will learn how to actually get the uh, energy from your feet into the earth. Okay. Yeah, no, that's definitely how I felt the first time. It's like the heels and my toes and the, and the bottoms of my feet I could tell were like so heavy that mm -hmm. yeah I could see that but it's good that it's working I was a bit doubting before we started because I've never done it like this so I'm glad it's working no it'll definitely especially with work and the breathing and grounding I could definitely use this in certain stressful slash anxious anxious situations especially since you could do it just sitting here so yeah yeah you can do it anywhere anytime and probably if you're in a situation which is stressful people won't even notice that you're doing something else <laughs> does anybody else want to share their experience no need to, but if you want to, this is the time. Yeah, the one we just did was like, I felt that one a lot. Like that's a really good mm -hmm. tool, like grabbing, yeah, like with the hand chakras. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was like very, like, yeah, that's what I'm definitely gonna use the ground and it's like very quick Yes. and effective. I can't even imagine like how that would be after like 30 minutes of like meditating like that it would probably be like really yeah. intense. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, an, a technique I learned from my energetic therapist teacher. And I remember when she showed it to us and then she just tried to push someone over with all her power and she couldn't do it. That's how powerful this technique is. So now we're learning a bit more about what is grounding, how does it actually feel to ground your energy in the earth, not only to be connected to the earth, but actually ground yourself. And I believe if um, you practice spirituality in some kind of way, and it's even more important if you have a job, which is very spiritual, to um, make sure that grounding is part of uh, your spiritual practices, like your daily practices. It's very important that we can ground ourselves. And it's also important to maintain balance because I also know that when we go too much into grounding, that we can become very materialistic, stubborn, 
and be less aware of our surroundings and be more aware of ourselves. And in moments, that is very good. But it's also, again, it's all about balance, the yin and the yang. Uh, we all know that, of course. So um, in order to stay healthy and balanced, but like healthy in a physical way, mental way, emotional way, and an energetical way, it's as good important to ground yourself as work on your connection with the divine. So just as good as you um, root your energy in the earth, it's important to open up for the light of the divine and the energy of the divine so you can actually keep a well-balanced uh, system in that kind of way. Um, of course, all of our chakras are important, but you have to make a start somewhere. So this is a start. But if you're going to focus on grounding, make sure you also focus on connecting to the universe, but then the light in the universe. So you won't dip the skills to one side. And um, now we can do different things. It's also a bit about how you guys feel. Uh, we can do different things. I have thought of a deeper root chakra meditation. But before we do that, I want to tell everybody this is a safe environment wherein we can just be and share whatever we want to share and keep to ourselves, which we want to keep to ourselves. Because our root chakra is also a memory container. And now we can say um, that I will guide you through a little bit of deeper root chakra meditation. But in this meditation, it's possible that certain images pop up, memories pop up, certain feelings pop up. Uh, it could even be images from past lives because this is also a past life container. So sometimes uh, heavy things can pop up. The thing is though, when you do this kind of meditation, you are also more aware of the facts what is standing you in the way of getting a healthy root chakra um, and it will help you create more awareness and once you open up things you can also start accept accepting them for what they are forgive it and then in order of that let things go to have a healthier energetic body but we can also say we skip this, but it's uh, all about you guys and what you are feeling. If you want to go for the deeper meditation or skip this one, and then we'll go for um, maintaining healthy boundaries. Meditation sounds good. Okay, I see more people nodding their head. Definitely agree. Okay, I'm gonna, if we go deeper, I'll turn my video off if you don't mind. Yes, no, I uh, I agree. I will also turn off my video because I will dive in with you guys because otherwise I won't be able to um to tap in with the meditation in general. I'm going to send you some music first and um. If there's any, yeah, I will just give you a minute or two minutes to put it on. I'll give you two minutes. <laughs> okay, here is it going to come in the chat. It's uh, uh, now there. And when you put on the music, I want you to check in with your walls of light first. If your walls of light are still standing where they are or if you want them a little closer or a little bit further away, or if you want to put a new intention in there, um, just create the perfect safe environment for you to take a deep dive into your root chakra. So this is like the first thing that we actually need to do before we can start. I will give um, you a moment. Yes? Can I just say, I've been playing this music from the beginning. And it's now been an hour roughly. So, so should I start it from the beginning as well? Or um, should I carry on where I was? 
I've sent a new link. Ah, uh, is it new? And it's um, it's from the same producer, but it's a different music. And you can put it anywhere you like. It doesn't actually matter where the music is. It's only to help you ground and help open up your root chakra. And this is also more with bulls and other kind of frequencies to help you open your root chakra. But the, the link seems the same to me. Am oh, I, then I'm sending the, the wrong one. No, maybe. Oh, yes, I think you're right. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I grabbed the wrong link. Thank you, Mantas. Is it important to have our feet on the ground or is lying down like, okay? You can also lie down if you feel like that. But Laura, I will um, recommend ankles, you so. <laughs> if we are going to talk about uh, the cables in a minute that you really focus on the cable in your root chakra connecting to the earth. Normally like we cord. will... Yes, yeah, normally we will connect as well as our lower back, as our feet to the heart of the earth. Uh -huh. But it's also how you feel comfortable. That's also very important. Thank you. It's funny that you mentioned cables right now because I was I had this weird vision that there was this like copper wire sort of like, mm -hmm. cool. like it was very huge and like just events <laughs> like it, in a vision way but anyway you just saw it you mean i saw it i felt it um kind of uh, yeah your third eye is very open i'd say too open <laughs> for what <laughs> i saw recently it's if you feel like you're, I put a new link in for the right music, but if you ever feel like any of your chakras is too much open, you can put a spoon under the cold tap and then put it on the place where your chakra is. It will help you close it off a little bit. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. That's neat. That's neat. Yes. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to turn off my camera. Um, can I just ask one more question? Um, yes, of course. Should I still keep my feet on the ground or are they all right too? Well, if you keep sitting just... down, I will keep them on the ground. But if you prefer laying down, then you have to put some more focus on your lower back when we dive in. Mm -hmm. So, Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to mention this again because I feel like it might be forgotten by some people. Um, check your walls of light if they need anything before we dive in. If it needs love or safety or if you want to pull it a little closer or put it a little bit further away. Just make sure you feel comfortable between your walls of light. And if you feel like it, you can invite your spirit guides from the light or your light team however you want to call them, your ancestors, to join you on this journey and to ask them to guide you. Be grateful for them that they are here and um, just put your intentions out there. And then we'll start in a bit. Don't worry about the music, it's long enough to just let it play. And one more thing about the music I almost forgot. When we are entering deeper states of grounding, our hearing will get more and more activated. So I would like to ask all of you to uh, put your volume a little bit down because you will get annoyed by it when, we, when we'll dive deeper in the, in the meditation and in the grounding.
Now we can start all by feeling very comfortable in the way we're seated or laying down. Everybody close their eyes. And let your breath just go naturally. Try to keep breathing through your belly. Doesn't matter if it doesn't work out, but give it a go. This meditation, we will use visualization to ground ourselves. So when you close your eyes, come to your breath. And while you're breathing, you feel the energy lowering down to the earth. This energy which you feel flowing into your feet. You will feel them flow into your toes. And then from your toes, you will send it into the ground. You will let roots from like tree roots grow from your toes, just your toes. Every time you breathe in, you send in more energy into the ground. And every time you breathe out, the roots grow deeper and deeper. Feel how the roots grow from your big toe and from the toe next to it. Feel them growing from your turco. And from your two smaller toes. If you have trouble creating these roots, put down your hands on your legs with your palms facing towards your legs. And while we're breathing, we'll create the next set of roots. These will be growing from the ball of your foot, the top part of your foot. It's a big, strong root. And every time you breathe, it grows deeper and deeper into the earth. And now the last root we're going to grow from our feet is in the back from our feet. Another big, strong and thick root growing out of your heels. And every time you breathe, it grows deeper and deeper. And in the middle of your feet, where your basic foot chakra is located, you will open little doors and you will start to grow cables from your middle part of your feet out of these doors. You can give them a color, but just make sure it's not black or gray. You can use any color you'd like. And every time you breathe, 
these cables grow into the earth deeper and deeper. Now you will also open the door at the lower part of your spine. And also from here, a cable is growing into the earth. And every time you breathe, it goes deeper and deeper until all of these cables connect to each other in the form of a triangle. And it all forms one cable. And every time we breathe, it grows deeper and deeper inside the earth. You may now visualize the heart of the earth. It's this pretty golden color and it's almost vibrating. And every time we breathe, the cable grows more closer and closer to the heart of the earth. And once you reach it, go around it. And every breath, you will go around it in one circle. We will do this for three breaths. So we'll wrap our cables around the heart of the earth three times. And before we continue, I want you to pay some awareness or to give some awareness to your whole body. Usually when we sit like this, there are places which feel kind of tense or even painful. What we're gonna do is we're gonna breathe to these places from our left. We will breathe the energy to to the place which hurts or which feels tense, and then hold your breath. And then a big sigh out and send it out through your foot back into the earth. Do this as often as you need it to make sure you have no big tension or pain left in your body so we can continue. It's possible that you hear some cracking or you feel some energy popping inside your body. Don't worry about this, this is all okay. And if you don't have any tense areas, just enjoy this moment of feeling grounded and calm.
One last deep breath. And sigh it all out. And now we're all going to bring awareness to the lowest part of our spine and the lowest part of our belly. And I would like you to visualize a small red kind of color energy residing into your body. And pay awareness for yourself if there's difference between the back front and if it's a bright kind of red or a little bit darker breathe into this color breathe into your belly and breathe out breathe in And breathe out. And every time you breathe deep into your belly, deep into your root chakra, this red energy starts to grow. It grows bigger and bigger each breath you take. Breathe in. And out. Make the red as big as your body. Breathe into it. Now each breath you take, you can make it slowly bigger and bigger, as comfortable as you feel like it to grow. A few more breaths. Breathe in, last breath. And out. Now you've created a visual of your root chakra. As red as as dark as, as it may be, it doesn't actually matter because it's your root chakra and all is okay. I want to ask you to bring attention to the middle part of this energy. When we start focusing on the middle of our root chakra, there can feelings pop up from feeling neglected, abandoned, maybe helpless or afraid. Maybe some childhood memories pop up. Maybe memories from abuse. Breathe through these feelings and breathe through the images that you're experiencing now. All is okay. It's even possible that you see images from past lives 
which do not feel very active now, but there's a lot of doubts. Breathe in a little deeper. Let everything you feel and you experience wash over you. All is allowed to be there. And if you feel like crying, let it flow. possible that memories from elementary school pop up, memories of being bullied. Memories of being an outsider. Or it could be memories pop up from drug abuse or substance abuse in general. Or some fears that pop up. And on your next breath, feel the warmth from the earth crawling around you, like it's giving you a big hug. Breathe in. And then hold your breath, feel the warmth filling your body. And breathe out. Then a deep breath again. Know that all is okay. And breathe out. And another deep breath in. Hold it for a little bit. And breathe out. Everything you feel right now, that's okay. It's calm, or stress, pain, or fear. Everything is okay. Let yourself feel through this moment. And know by feeling intense or very nice emotions. But Mother Earth is always here holding you, providing for everything that you need. She will help you transform all stagnant energy. She will also provide you with new one. The only thing you have to do is step into her resources because there's enough for everybody. Try to focus on your breath.
And on your next breath in, if you feel like it, you can ask your spirit guides or your ancestors or lost loved ones for some guidance. You may come forward with some numbers, a message, a cuddle, or maybe an image of an animal, a spirit animal. Or they will come forward themselves. They can communicate in any kind of way. And just keep breathing on your own for a little while. See whatever pops up in this deep state of ground and connecting. Let the music and your spirit guides guide you through your root chakra. Anything that pops up is okay.
And now you may slowly return your attention and your awareness back to your breathing. Feel how your back is sitting in the chair or laying on the bed. Feel your legs being heavy. Start to wiggle them a little bit, but carefully. Start to wiggle your toes, wiggle your feet a little bit, bringing more and more awareness back to the here and now. Use your breath to get back in the here and now, get back into your body. Take all the time that you need, as long as you need. Once you come back, I want you to turn to your, to your paper with your pen or pencil and write down everything you've experienced. It could be thoughts, images, people coming forward. <clears throat> Messages from your spirit guides or maybe traumas you've experienced again. Could be anything, just write anything down which seems valuable to you. Because as good as our memory seems to be, we can't remember all the details from the meditation. And by writing them down, you can come back to it later. And make sure before you come back to the screen to thank your spirit guides or spirit animals or yourself for having this moment, but also for the guidance you have received from your light team and the universe. Thank Mother Earth and be grateful for her guiding you through life and for holding you, replenishing you, calming you, anything you can think of, but make sure you, uh, you'll speak out about the things you're grateful for.
When you're ready to return to the screen, uh, will you please put on your camera or make a sound? Doesn't matter if you're not ready yet, but uh, then at least I'll know. I'm ready. Okay. Welcome back. Thank you. They'll say that that was very <laughs> deep. Yeah. <gasps> you had like a big 10 minutes to get back. I thought that was so necessary. You were right. The music was very intense. Yeah. <laughs> and I did turn it all the way down too. I was like, oh my God, I could hear like drumming. And then I started hearing noises and I was like, what's going yeah. on? <laughs> yeah, I'm back reluctantly. Yes. <laughs> I enjoyed the I enjoy, I like the music more. Sometimes I find it because I'm quite connected to music. I find it quite uh, like distracting and mm -hmm. like overstimulating. But it it worked. That music worked really well. Yeah, I think. Thank you. I um, I had some other music first, but that was from Spotify, and then I was like, well, probably not everybody has that. So then I dove into YouTube yeah. and I found these two, and I was so. I was so happy with it. I'm Your, glad it um, worked well. You, that, that was amazing. You did. It was really good. It was amazing. Um, you have a good uh, way of like energy of holding. You know, felt really safe. Yeah. Like your like feeling um, older. Your like balance between like male and female is really like good. Like nurturing, but kind of really steady and strong um mm. thank you thank you too for your feedback yeah i thought i was i'm definitely gonna uh like run that back on the recording to like redo that because that was really interesting um and I, yeah i just got so deep in meditation and you're really good at it. And it's yeah, I don't really know what else to say. Um, well, thank yeah, you. Really, really good. amazing. It was really nice to do a group, like a live group meditation is so different. Like I used to do it quite a lot. I haven't done it for years. Mm -hmm. It was really good. So thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, I saying like your container, you know, I. I just allowed loads of fears to come up, you know, and just feel, just be with them. Yeah. I do quite a lot exactly. of shadow work anyway, so I don't mind that, but it was it's like just a really amazing experience. It was nice. Yes, it can be scary at first, but once you actually sit with them, sometimes they eventually, when they actually get a place, it doesn't feel so bad anymore because you... You can kind of accept that it's yeah. Happening. You can kind of observe them as you know something that's not you know I don't know it can't be objective mm -hmm. about it. Um, but it's it's powerful to just be able to do that to have the space. Yeah. The more often you do it, the more easier it will get. Yeah, I can definitely see that as this is like a first time really concentrating in a setting like this that if I continue to do it um, it'll just get easier and the feelings will get um, more comfortable yeah yeah in the beginning it's mostly not that comfortable I remember doing this the first time with our class and everybody was crying 
and um yeah a lot of stuff comes out because it's like our youth container like everything that happens gets stuffs in there and people who are very um creative with uh visualizing mostly see what happens back there back in the days or back in the years or even in past lives and that can be very confronting and feeling the feelings again or like going through fears again it can be very intense the first time you do it but i do experience when we give ourselves space and as laura said to be objective about it it will get easier to handle and because by giving them space and air um we also give can are more able to let it go than to hold it in our energetic body like we can't let go of it but the more we be objective towards it and the more we give space to it and breathe into it the more we will be able to let it go with more practice i can imagine doing that meditation on different occasions and having really different experiences mm -hmm. um, it's quite a rich kind of open ground for experiencing different things yes yes it actually is i really wanted it to be open to because everybody has their own things they have experienced everybody has something but it's also different from what we experience but this technique you can also use for your other chakras to visualize them and see the state of what they are and see what's located in there And I'm wondering, just asking, you do not have to share if you do not feel like it, but um, did everybody, did anybody get like a message or maybe a, uh, an image or anything like that? I was seeing a lot of animals, like birds, especially like oh. flying. Okay. And, and flashes of white light. Oh. Okay. And there was definitely someone over there with you. And um, probably the white light um, is some energy which is with you, guiding you, maybe some kind of spirit guide or whatever you want to call it. And they can communicate um, with showing us images of animals. And um, by writing down which animals you've seen, like even different kind of birds have different kind of meanings. And then you can like decode what they are trying to say to you, because most of the time it will help us on our path that we're walking on right now. Okay, that makes sense. And I will tell you that most spiritual mediums that I've seen have told me I'm very open. So mm -hmm. maybe that's why those visualizations may come easy but have to still keep diving deeper to understand the meaning of them so yes yes i am um, i always always feel like everybody has their own um like born talent everybody can like grow into this if they want to but some people are more into feeling, some people are more into hearing, and some people are more into seeing. And um, could be very possible that you are more into seeing. And um, like with writing all of these things down, you can dive deeper each and every single time because when you write these things down, you can actually keep track of all the messages you get through uh, the seeing in your case and um yes it will help you on your path to open it up a little bit more and create more understanding in it definitely but if on you... that note I, I do have to run and this was beautiful i'm gonna go and replay this again every time but thank you so much you're very welcome this... thank you for being here yeah no thanks everyone have a good rest of the weekend hey there you too um
for me, I, I really had this like message that dreams, like I kept going back to this crazy dream I had last night. And it just like was telling me how I have to really look at my chakras. Like when I first wake up, cause I just do have, especially these days, such intense dreams and um, they have such a, a massive impact on, you know, how my day goes or just like how it starts is it, for me is just so important. So yeah, that was kind of like the, the message I got was like really work with yourself spiritually in the morning. Like when you first wake up, like have that be like the, not, not necessarily the main time, but really it's like when I'm most sensitive energetically. So, um, and there's also, a, you know, I, I was just in the dream world, like c- completely connected. So it's just a great time. I'm going to try to get myself in the habit to like meditate and do spiritual work, grounding work, like in the morning. I think that's a beautiful message um, in your situation right now and how your life path is currently evolving. I think you can really work with that. Yeah, totally. Be good. Yeah. Does anybody else feel like sharing? I do. Um, it was really intense. <laughs> um, a lot came up, but the the thing that really connected was it it took me immediately back to this repeat nightmare I had as a child and it was a very traumatic feeling and I think it connected to trauma I had as a child but um I was in Mm -hmm. that moment and then all of a sudden I smelled the chocolate chip pancakes my grandparents used to get me for breakfast when they'd take me out and you know I I definitely feel like they're guides of mine um and I felt like they were mm-hmm. there. And what kind of came to mind was it was almost like a meshing of the nurturing and the, uh, you know, the things that they gave me and taught me about as a child compared to the trauma and how that trauma made me stronger and how I was able to move forward with my children and kind of break that cycle and bring them the nurturing and the strength in a more healthy way. Mm-hmm. So it was almost like seeing a a broken cycle or something. And then kind of realizing I had the control in that dream to break out of it. You know, I didn't have to be there. Beautiful. So it was really, really an amazing breakthrough. I think. It gives me chills all over my body. I think you've got a beautiful message and also some kind of confirmation maybe about all the good work you've already been doing. Yeah. And, um, what it's leading to and how you can use your experiences to break more cycles for yourself, which feel maybe, um, I don't know the word, but like you're feeling this, I don't know the word in English, but it will um, help you break through um, some kind of patterns like your nightmare, like you said. Yes, yeah. Yeah, cycles. I feel like I'm bringing cycles like crazy. And I got the message. There was a couple messages. One was, um, it's all about love. And then the other was that the wings, you know, we all have wings. Yes, we My do. My grandmother, she's a cardinal. When she comes back, I see her as a cardinal all the time. And I, I am a raven, I think. And it was like, she was looking at me saying, you know, we're both birds. We all have wings we're just a little different Mm -hmm. and those wings could take me out of that horrible place you know it was Mm -hmm. really neat and you're really good at talking through you know the the meditation I really was able to follow you very well you're so talented I I, you actually came to me in the middle of it what a gift you have (laughs) It, it was recognized you know so thank you for sharing it no thank you for sharing your feedback and um, thank you again. And um, what did I want to say? I lost it. Probably not important. <laughs> Sometimes that's a sign, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think um, even though you have a lot to do for yourself, that you are also already doing so much and um, you will get there step by step, Mandy. Yeah, I hope so. I feel like I will. It's just yeah, it's you will. You will. <laughs> it is. It will take time uh, and everything which is good will take time. Just yes. like coffee. Absolutely. It's part of the journey, yeah. right? Yes, it really is. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you too, Mandy. Anybody else feel like sharing? Doesn't matter if you don't feel like it. Um, a lot of mine was quite personal, but there was some stuff. There was like a part of me that was afraid of coming forwards, and it was meeting this part of me that, had, like, had a past life where I'd misused power. Um, mm -hmm. And I needed to get, I needed to release that so oh. that I'm not blocking that, like, mm -hmm. that part of me. Um, yeah. I think it's beautiful. It came forward and that you realize that it's something that's time to release. Mm. Were you able to let it go, if I may ask? Um, uh, yeah, I think and otherwise I, it's a work in progress. Yeah, I have my t tools and techniques for releasing past life stuff. So I might, it, I'm glad you made me write stuff down. I, I'm a bit lazy with that sort of thing sometimes, <laughs> but, uh, I have a way of recording all of my notes so that I can use my pendulum to reference. Yeah. So oh, I can cool. Also, it will always come back to me if I need it. Mm -hmm. But I might so look at it. Yeah, I, might ref I might reflect <laughs> on it later. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's good to let it sink in for a bit and then come yeah. back to it later. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And then you will get new insights. Mm Well, we're in for like um, two hours and 15 minutes already. And now we can do different things. We can sit and chat with each other. We can finish up. I don't know what Jesse usually does. And um, I also have another thing which we, which we could discuss. It's about um, reclaiming your energy. I heard multiple people say as well in the group chat as in Cosmos meetings that they feel sucked dry and that they feel like um, people suck out their energy which makes them feel empty. And um, I have a technique which you can just do in your bed in the evening to reclaim all of your power back and all of your energy back to make sure um, you will always go to bed with all of your own energy, but it's up to you. I think it sounds like a great idea. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. We can relate to that. Yes, then we'll um, then we'll dive into this as well. Um, Jesse, I have this picture I wanted to show. I can, I don't hear you. Sorry, um, that green button in the middle that says share screen. Oh yeah. Or actually, maybe I have to put you as the let's see, make host. Okay. Yes. So you should be able to hit the green button, share screen, and then it should be yes. like op an option to share, show your window. And then if you mm -hmm. have it pull pulled up mm -hmm. on your computer or your tablet, yes. then it should show it. Okay, do you see my screen right now? Yeah. Cool. Your back, your, what was your, yeah. Okay. Yeah, my background was this with rise and shine on the top. I'm doing <laughs> this on my tablet. This is what we're gonna look at. 
I first want to speak with you about what actually happens when you feel drained after meeting with somebody or after some stressful situations. In this picture, in the middle, of course, you see your body, your physical body, and around that is your energetic field in multiple layers. And what we've just did is uh, like with growing roots from the root chakra. Here you can actually see it in a picture how, um, how it shows. And I was wondering if anybody wants to share. Did anybody use gold for their color of their root? In the meditation? See that as a no. Okay, cool. So when we interfere with people in our daily life, um, we walk around, we interfere with people, and um, sometimes you come across somebody that sucks you dry. What actually happens is when you get into each other's field, multiple things can happen, but mostly um, it's an energetic cord which forms from our energetic fields, from the outer layers of our body to their energetic fields. And we do this all day. And it's actually, it's very normal to form energetic connections with people. Most of them are healthy, but not all of them are. And uh, with some people, we form unhealthy connections. Sometimes it's even karmic. And um these energetic connections through these cords, which get attached to our fields. This is what sucks us dry and what makes us feel drained after meeting with somebody because they actually suck the life force out of your energetic field. And then you have to fill up again from the resources from the earth. So that is technically what happens. Now there is not like any way to prevent this from happening but what is possible is to reclaim your energy and to um, visualize these cords and let them go i won't recommend to cut cords because um, when you cut cords yourself and you do it in the wrong way you can create holes in your field which will uh, result into leaking from your energy and then you will still feel very tired and it will result in physical problems so if you're going to work with these energetic cords because you feel drained after meeting people always make sure that you let them go that they just separate from you and that you don't use any cord cord cutting technique because otherwise you uh, it could it could happen that you do it the wrong way. You should only let someone with experience do this. And um, there are a lot of people around us who uh, come through the day by stealing each other's energy. And you will realize it soon enough. Just pay attention to how you feel after you meet with people. And... Um, if you feel drained by the same person again and again, then you know that this is this energetic cord and they are actually stealing your energy. So what can you do to reclaim it? We just did um, in the beginning of this last meditation, we grew roots from our feet. And um, this is actually something that you can do before you go to bed. But if you want to do it laying in bed, I would recommend working with the cables and then working from with the cable from the lower part of your spine and then attach this to the heart of the earth. Once you've done that, you should open a lotus flower on your head and inviting the light of the divine into your energetic body. And um, you can use like the divine light, the light of the divinity, you can use the Holy Spirit, but just make sure whatever you use, that it's something that comes from the light. So you will connect to the right source. And what you're going to do afterwards is that you will breathe the light through your field, just like we just breathe it 
breathe, breathe it. Sorry, I'm having trouble with my English, but just like we just uh, breathe the red through our field, you can also do this with the white light coming from your crown chakra into your energetic body. And then you just let it flow through your whole body, through each breath and take as much breaths as you need. Sometimes you will only need two or three breaths and sometimes you need 20 breaths. It just depends on the state of how you're feeling. And um, once you've done this part, so you've, you're actually shining the light from the universe, then you can let this light create into a bubble around you. So you visualize this bubble, just like we visualize those walls of light. And um, by visualizing this bubble, you put the intention in it that it's a filter, that everything that comes through that bubble of light, that only the light can come through, so only the good parts. And that the other remaining parts, which remain outside of the bubble, that Mother Earth will transform these for you. And you can make this bubble as big as you'd like or as small as you'd like. It's, it's important that you feel comfortable in it. And um, I will um, post this in the chat, so you can probably just um, just copy and paste it. But once you've put this bubble, there's a few sentences that you will need to speak out loud in your bed or in your chair, wherever you are, to uh, make sure that you reclaim all your energy. And it goes as following. I call back now any power or light that I have willingly or unwillingly given away or had taken from me. I let go of any cords or attachments from this life or others. I release all these energies for the highest good of all. And so it is, and so it is, and so it is. Then you breathe in through your nose and you sigh it out very loudly through your mouth, releasing any excess energy. And while speaking this, breathing through it, you can also visualize it. You will have to find your own way in which will feel uh, good for you and comfortable for you to perform this in. Mm. The first few times I did this, I felt a lot of things happening. but. Um, before we continue, before I continue to speak about this, um, I would like to check in with you guys if uh, this makes sense until so far. Yes, cool. Yep. Okay. And um, you can do this as often as you want. Like in the beginning when I performed this uh, exercise, sometimes I had to do it six times in a row. And only like the last time I actually performed it, I could see the cords falling off because some energetic cords are very intense very karmic or even parasitic, like actually sucking you dry. And it takes effort to let go of these cords. Um, how will you recognize if you have one of these cords? People uh, who are very um, into visualizing, they can probably see it if you like sit down in meditation breathe in and like come into this deep state of meditation and then start to visualize yourself and see what's happening. So um, most mostly then you can see it. You can also ask yourself or even just pay attention to how you've been feeling lately. If you feel tired all the time, then this could be 
this could be a sign of having an unhealthy cord, which you need to let go of. But it's also something that you will have to experience by yeah, going through it and see how it works out for you if you're doing these exercises. Does anybody have any questions or wants to speak about anything? Because this was the last thing I actually had planned. I have a question. What could you do about it? Or is there anything you could do about it if you did a cord cutting and happened to do it wrong and left those holes? Yes, there is something you can do about it, but um, it's like, um, it's energetic work, which you need to study for. So you will probably need help. Do you feel like you've made a mistake with it? Possibly. Um, I've, I've done some cord cutting in the past. And after you said that, I kind of wonder if, you know, I made that type of mistake, you know, and that could be part of the problem. <laughs> could be, yes. Mostly uh, I have made this mistake myself too. And I have been so tired. I could only sleep. I couldn't do anything else. Mm -hmm. So I was feeling very, very low on energy with, for no reason at all. And then that is when I started to wonder and um, that is when I actually found out that I was leaking energy and I uh, got to repair it for myself because I'm studying for this energetic therapy. Uh, it's not a course, it's like, um, it's like full on college. Uh -huh. But um, do you feel tired all the time? Yes, um, but there's other reasons possibly for that as well because I've had the long haul yeah. and heart issues mm -hmm. and stuff so but I'm wondering how much of this could be you know related to that and I mean I did the cord cuttings I'm thinking of several years ago mm -hmm. but um maybe it was trickle down effect you know could be yeah what we can do Mandy is that we just sit down with each other anytime soon and then I will take a look for you if you are leaking any energy Okay, That'd be great. we'll just do this online. All right, well, I'll have you next. Sorry, you, um, I didn't hear you. Oh, I said I'll, I'll connect with you then and we can set yeah. something up. That'd yeah, be great. That's good. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. And then we'll take a look for you if there's anything wrong or if there's a leak. Okay, good, thank you. You're welcome. When I've been taught a cord cutting, um, you can like ask spirit to fill up the holes um, in the layers of your aura. I mean, there might be deeper stuff than that, but um, actually just to ask for those holes to be, to be filled up um, is yes. one way of doing it. Um, Yes, actually, you can ask anything. This is also a technique. I didn't think of that. But um, it could be a way. If it works, it works. I know it works for me a lot of the times when I have parts of my energetic field that I need to heal, which I can't reach with my hands. Then I always just always ask the Holy Spirit and uh, the Holy Spirit will give. So this is also something you can try. Does anybody else have a question or feel like sharing something about the whole session? Also, some feedback would also be great. Yeah, it really felt like you've done this a million times. It's really, really good. I like nearly fell asleep during that meditation, which is a good sign for me. Um, like it's just super, super deep. I'm definitely going to revisit, revisit this, um, like re-listen to this session and especially mm -hmm. the meditation, the meditations, because there's just a lot. A lot in it. I'm sure that even though there wasn't, there weren't that many people here. I, I, I think a lot of people will listen to this one in the in the recording. And uh, I think, I mean, I can speak for myself, but I would guess that everyone here is very grateful. And thank you very much. You're very welcome. And uh, thank you for your feedback because I think I'm I mentioned it, but I've 
I've led meditations before also for more people, but it's always been like when we physically see each other. So then you see what's happening and you feel what's happening. And I just go with the flow then. And now I had to prepare all the stuff. So it was different for me and I was kind of nervous. So um, it feels good and nice that um, you had a great experience with it. You know, earlier I said it was clear that you had a gift, but not only that, um, I was really impressed. Just, you know, I've been trying to look for ways to work with my root chakra and it always seems so complicated. You know, I, I think I over complicate it, but um, you know, what kind of foods to eat and you know, all the things, the oils and the, you know, what all can I do to help my root chakra? But mm -hmm. it was so simple, you know, and these are things you can do daily in your regular self-care schedule and rituals. So I think that alone is wonderful. And you could not tell that you were nervous. You were, you were very professional. I figured you'd done this a million times too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I don't think you overcomplicate it. I think it's very overcomplicated by society because um, we get so many crystals and oils and kind of <laughs> incense and you can <laughs> buy so many things for your root yeah. chakra and your other chakras, but we actually forget the main things which keep us healthy. But mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know this and I learned this in college. So um, if I wouldn't have learned this in college, I wouldn't have known it either. Then I would also go with the oils and the crystals. And <laughs> I still have this big red justice that is chilling with me on the floor now. Oh, it's nice. amazing. That's yeah. <laughs> it's an amazing <laughs> grounding crystal. <laughs> Very nice. But still, I will always go with um, the grounding techniques that we just shared. And there are more, but I feel like this is enough for today. That's a great start. Thank, Thank you, you very much for your feedback. You're welcome. <laughs> And I really enjoyed doing this with you today. I learned a lot again. And um, yeah, it also opens up my eyes for my own possibilities for all the other things I can actually do through, through the screen. Like ever since I joined Cosmos, I learned how much I can do through this little screen. I wasn't actually aware of the fact that it works this well. And like with the psychic um, reading stuff that we did the first time, like the first meeting that we did um, on each other's um, friends and family and sisters, brothers, stuff like that. Before that, I didn't even knew that I could see things in pictures. I would always experience it in, in, physical, in physical ways. So um, I would like to thank you for... Um, helping me grow into this. Yeah, it's, it's kind of surprising how much you can do through the, through the Zoom. Mm -hmm. But it's good, <laughs> thank God. It would be not have been a good two years if it was completely impossible to do anything through the screen of this type. Yeah, thank God for Zoom. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I have anything more to share. Okay, well, I think, uh, yeah, if, I mean, I don't, I don't have anything, anything today. I think we've, it's been a, a perfect session, perfect length. I don't really have anything to add myself, um, unless, I, does, anyone, does anyone have anything um, that they'd like to say or, I guess, close with? All right, well, 
I guess that's it. Well, I just want to say thank you so much again, Yehara. That was so good. So, so good. And um, yeah, we can, if, you know, definitely talk about doing something similar. Um, I don't know if you, if you, if you'd want to do, if you have a, a different shock or any, anything, you know, I always want Cosmos and this, this is for anyone. Um, who has anything that they, that they think could be of value to teach, just message me and um, you could do your own version of what Yehara did. Um, so yeah, this is awesome. Thank you too for the, for the possibility and um, yeah, the chance to do this. Definitely, definitely. Awesome. I wish you all good night. Yeah, you too. Or good day. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Who knows? Thanks. Whatever. <laughs> Thank all you. Right, good guys. night. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye